From Panic to Empowerment, How to Stop Pain and Disease from Taking Over Your Life by Connecting Spirit, Mind, and Body by Dr. Stephanie E. Reed. Chapter 7, Body Talk, Renewal. One tiny five-letter word can have so many meanings. We've seen in earlier chapters how perspective dictates perception, and in this case, even meaning. To reinforce the concept of the three R's approach to healing, to move you from panic to empowerment, let's agree that the term renew in this context of this book means A, to make something new, fresh, or strong again. So what are you renewing? You are renewing your spirit, mind, and body ultimately, but the third R refers to your body and its ability to heal. Oftentimes, we take medications, undergo surgery, or try other methods to relieve our pain and disease. For a time, we may get some relief. If we continue taking prescription drugs or recreational drugs, we become dependent on covering up symptoms, yet still long for healing. Healing does bring peace. What actually happens is we find ourselves even more disillusioned as we sink deeper into a pit of uncertainty and disappointment. The only lasting way out is to find the root cause of what ails us. What is eating at you, making you sick and robbing you of your energy and joy? The past few chapters, we explored the spirit and the mental contributors. How much have you learned, explored, or wrote in your journal to dig deep to find your answer to the question, what is eating at you? Getting to the root cause of those problems is what natural and alternative medicine protocols thrive on. Yet, your deliverance will require some additional work. You will need to find the courage to look at your life in a totally different way. That means take off the mask. Look at the lies and the stories to create something fresh. No worries, some work is being done right now. While you were doing the activities, reading stories and reflecting in your journal, you were creating new neural pathways to healing. Videos and fellow learner experiences are components found in the online course from Panic to Empowerment. You see, to create a paradigm shift, you have to shake things up Stop old thought patterns in their tracks and make yourself aware of things you were blind to. You did this in the first half of the book when you explored the lessons, self-exploration, how do you feel, spirit work acknowledging the boss and mind rewrite your story. Now that the groundwork has been set, you will really get the empowerment part. In a nutshell, the renew of the three R's approach to healing is a passive side effect of learning how to connect the spirit and mind. The body can relax quickly, establishing a balance that creates peace and calm. Just by allowing that to happen, your heart gets to take a break. Your adrenal gland takes a mini vacation and your bowels open. All kinds of wonderful biological functions work more efficiently. It is a wonderful thing, really. To be pain and disease free, is a gift you can give to yourself anytime you need to. Now you can truly move from panic to empowerment with confidence. The key to renew is to practice new knowledge and don't let the mind regain control. Remember, your spirit is the boss. The four key markers of physical health, sleep, mood, energy, bowel function. These are the four keys to optimal health Observing these functions of your body will put you on notice of how you're doing. These markers are easy to identify and can be used as a personal tool for checking in. Here's the cool part. When any of the four are off, they create a chain reaction for the other three. Look at it as if your body has parties. When all are invited, all is well. When one part lags behind, the party can't continue. To put it another way, Your body works as a system of interconnecting parts and functions. When one part or system is compromised, the entire system will begin to decline. This is a very effective system to monitor for health awareness. 
but it has its flaws. The body is so efficient at working with less, you may not quickly be able to identify that there is a problem until the problem is really noticeable. A heart attack comes to mind, cancer, diabetes, or maybe arthritis. These are all the slow burn disease states, meaning you have to be depleted for a long time for these guys to appear. When they do arrive on the scene, you can be assured that it took a long time to manifest. Years of sleep deprivation, abnormal bowel function, low energy, and funky moods can create a horrible sense of dis-ease. But since you have been telling a story, lying to yourself and not allowing your feelings to come to the surface, you did not hear, see, or maybe not even felt the warning. And if you had no knowledge of the four markers, then essentially you were blindsided. To say you are healthy but have poor bowel function is like saying your car runs in tip-top shape but the alignment is off. If the alignment stays off, you will have an axle problem, brake problems, and suspension issues. Essentially, your car would turn into a death trap if you did not get the original wheel alignment fixed. It's no secret that the average person takes better care of their car than they do their own bodies. Even if you knew absolutely nothing about the mechanics of a car, you do know that every three to 5,000 miles, you take your car in for a checkup. One item that is always on the list is wheel alignment. The others include brakes, oil change, and air filter. We already explained what happens if you let an alignment problem last too long. But if you don't get an oil change, the existing oil turns clumpy and sticky and can clog up your engine. If that happens, you need a new engine, buy a new car. Enough about cars. We tend to them more than we take care of our own bodies. That is the point I was making. The standard requirement for going to the doctors for a checkup is once per year. You get a car checkup on an average once per season. If we do the math, that is approximately four times per year. Now that this has been brought to your attention, it's easy to see how you may be experiencing pain and disease in your life. You have been taught to wait an entire year for intervention. If you did feel something, you dismissed it. Why? You learned in chapter four that you're not aware of the spiritual cues that give you hints about your health. You never learned how to identify them. When they surfaced, you ignored them. No more hiding in the darkness of the unknown. The more you know, the easier it is to make informed decisions about your health. Moving you from panic to empowerment is about uncovering hidden truths that can make the difference between your transformation and your demise. Without turning into a medical textbook, let's briefly explore what happens with your sleep, bowels, energy, and mood as it relates to health. All four components need to be working optimally for your body to function properly. Taking any of them for granted is a recipe for disease and pain. Sleep. When you fall asleep, magic happens. You repair, burn the most fat, and heal. Yes, this is all possible because when you are asleep, your body does not have to be concerned with pumping extra blood. You are not running, thinking, walking, or chewing. Your muscles are relaxed unless you have restless leg syndrome, which would indicate a mineral deficiency. Also, the need for calories burned for energy expenditure is greatly reduced. This is the perfect environment for your health to be restored. But if you deprive yourself of meaningful rest by going to sleep at 4 a.m. when you have to get up at 7, you can create a problem. Inconsistent sleep habits have an effect on the kind of sleep you have, which include REM and non-REM sleep, as well as your circadian rhythm. REM sleep refers to the time when you are dreaming and you experience rapid eye movement. Non-rapid eye movement sleep is referred to as deep sleep or slow wave sleep. The quality of your sleep depends on your ability to get three to five cycles of both types of sleep. The quality of sleep is also concerned with whether you are following your body's internal clock 
or circadian rhythm. This aspect of sleep is critical because it tells your body when it should be sleep and when it should be awake. To override these aspects of sleep can cause serious health problems. Not getting enough quality sleep is reason enough to be moody to everyone you come in contact with. Health problems, what kind of problems? I'm glad you asked. Sleep deprivation over time can cause many health problems, including reduced cognitive function, which is your mental processing. According to the National Heart, Blood, and Lung Institute, sleep deficiency is linked to many chronic health problems, including heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, obesity, and depression. When I was in college, I used to pull the all-nighter study session to prepare for finals. That actually never worked. For me, never. I do remember the time I took a no-dose pill and drank a Mountain Dew. The point was to keep me awake so I could study. Not only could I not focus because I was literally hopping from bed to bed, but I also could not fall asleep for 48 straight hours. By the time I could fall asleep, I missed my final because I couldn't hear the alarm. The exercise in futile studying was a waste of time and money. If my mom is reading this, she would probably guess, you did that? Yes, mom, I did that. What causes poor sleep quality in your everyday life? Here are some clues. If you tend to worry about everything, thinking about the detriment of your circumstances without thinking about solutions, you will not get any sleep. If you eat carbohydrates before bed, you will be awake for a while. No amount of counting sheep will help you. You might as well get back out of the bed and do some jumping jacks to burn off the sugar you gave yourself, which was fuel. Carbohydrates should only be used as a source of fuel, not a bedtime snack. Do you want to get a good night's rest? Snack on some spirulina. It has the highest content of tryptophan, an amino acid that makes you sleep and good for building proteins. And proteins are the building blocks for every cell in the form of an amino acid. Tryptophan is needed to make serotonin, a neurotransmitter that plays a vital role in protecting you from experiencing depression and anxiety. The body also uses tryptophan to make niacin, which is a vitamin needed for cholesterol maintenance and melatonin, a hormone responsible for feel-good sleep. There are so many theories about sleep, I'll keep it simple and just reiterate that lack of sleep can be costly. Don't take it for granted. One trick to see if you're getting enough sleep is to check in. If you feel like you can just get out of bed without needing for an alarm clock, your sleep was restorative. On the flip side, if you woke up groping for the alarm clock to smack it into orbit, you have a sleep problem. If the problem is chronic, disease will make its home in your life. Bowels. Your bowels handle waste management and nutrient absorption, but let's backtrack. Digestion actually begins in the mouth, engages the stomach, and needs the input from the liver and kidneys before any nutrients ever get to the small intestines where they're absorbed. The large intestine is where waste is eliminated. The bowels are so critical that they are considered the most critical organ for human survival. Life and death begin in the colon. Although we casually mention other organs like the liver and kidneys, I also mentioned that I was not going to make this a medical textbook. However, for the sake of common knowledge, let's briefly explore the bowels. Essentially, when you chew food, saliva is the first digestive enzyme to aid in the digestive process. You must chew food thoroughly for this to happen. I heard you must chew each bite at least 30 times. If you are not inclined to count, I'd recommend chewing until you create a liquid paste in your mouth. At the very least, make sure you are not swallowing quarter-sized bites. After you chew for a while, food then goes into the stomach. Necessary metabolic functions happen in the liver, kidneys, and blood. Then the digestive soup is passed to the small intestines for nutrients to be absorbed. If there is no obstruction from damaged villi, which are those small projectiles that absorb nutrients, your bowels would have done their job. But there's a lot that can go wrong along the way. 
Before I go any further, I must inform you that your gut is your second brain. What? Yes, your second brain. Okay, let me explain. You need to be able to grasp this so you can effectively deal with your next health crisis. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but the next crisis is coming. The key is to be able to get through the experience more quickly and not have it add to your existing blocks that grip you in panic and despair. You should be able to do a bowel observation from the point of common knowledge and common sense. Similar to the brain, your gut has its own separate nervous system. In fact, your gut is called your second brain. That second brain has 500 million neurons, is nine meters long, and starts at the esophagus and ends at the anus. It's this brain that is responsible for mood changes, chocolate cravings, and can work independently or codependently with the brain in your skull. It is also this brain that can give you signals of pending doom and pleasure. Did you know your gut brain can produce its own dopamine, the feel-good hormone? Knowing that your gut or your bowels can do all this, it makes sense to be nice to it so it can be nice to you. Word to the wise, be very careful what you put in your mouth. The result can mean bliss or battle. Personally, I choose to feel blissfully happy. So consider this, food can support healing and good health or contribute to the most debilitating diseases. For instance, if you eat wheat, rye, barley, or oats, which are your classic gluten foods, the entire bowel function can be compromised. These foods create inflammation that not only hinders absorption of nutrients, but also creates a breeding ground for parasites, fungus, and bacteria. If you are experiencing constipation, these foods are to blame. They cause inflammation, and not only in the gut, but throughout the entire system. Inflammation and damage to the gut mixed with microbial infection definitely equal constipation. Impacted waste is a buffet for microbes, which means gastroenteritis, Crohn's disease, colitis, and diverticulitis for you. I warned you to be nice to your gut. Additional waste in the body creates a toxic mess that can zap your energy affect your mental health due to malabsorption of nutrients, and create other health problems from asthma to cancer. Think bowel irregularity is not a big deal? Think again. Just a side note, if you find yourself with locked bowels, using the three R's approach to healing can help. This techniques work with all kinds of stuff. If we stick to the idea that the spirit is the boss, we loop a story and our body follows, then it makes sense to investigate the cause of locked bowels from a spiritual angle. You have already come to know that your spirit is your emotional center. Stuffed emotions would translate into stuffed bowels. I'd surely call that constipation. Constipation usually accompanies a stomach ache. The stomach is where your food is broken down and turned into an acid soup. If your stomach gives you a fit, ask yourself or your spirit, what can't you digest or understand? Here is a moment to get practice. Take out your journal and write down your bowel history for the past six months. Observe if you have had problems. If so, see if you can trace them to food choices or emotions. If you can't think of anything, start today. Create a bowel log. Doing so can help you be more aware of your body functions and the changes that take place due to emotional and mental challenges. Continuing this habit of thinking will definitely ensure that you experience the shift you seek. Mood and energy. Your mood and energy are both directly impacted by sleep and bowel function for obvious reasons. If you are not getting proper nutrients, mineral imbalances will affect your moods and your sleep. To add additional clarity, remember that nutrients are absorbed into the small intestines. If absorption is hindered, energy gets depleted, creating those funky moods I mentioned earlier. You can forget about sleep. The more toxic and less nourished you are, the more likely you will suffer from some kind of insomnia. Are you beginning to see the big picture? Think about it. If you have been depressed for some time, have you considered your second brain? What are you feeding it? Sugar, 
cookies, soda, candy, crackers, and pasta? Oh, I see. If that is the case, you are also feeding your depression, low moods, and low energy. Reviewing hundreds of hair tissue analysis over the years, I have become quite familiar with mood and energy depletion scenarios. Sodium potassium ratios can create depression accompanied by low thyroid function, brought on by eating too many carbohydrates and not enough protein. I have seen that if inflammation exists, the body may not be able to break down protein to an amino acid form if there is inflammation caused by gluten intolerance. The tricky part is, just because you eat a piece of chicken or steak doesn't mean you are able to absorb it. If you can't absorb it for use, it turns to an additional ingredient in your toxic soup. I hope by now, you are beginning to see a really nice web being weaved of information that can give you clues to how you can control your own health. Have you considered that it might be your diet that is creating your disease? Diet is the key component to optimal health. Optimal health can be measured by your quality of life that is determined by your moods and energy. Nutrition is essential for every metabolic function, and without proper nutrition, cells can't regenerate properly, tissues become weak, organ function slows down, and you get tired. At this critical mass, pain and disease take over your life. Your only road to gaining your health back is to get to the root cause of your pain and disease by understanding the intricate connection between your spirit, mind, and body. Once you see the connection clearly, you can use the three R's approach to healing to turn your own life around one circumstance at a time. Do you know anything about minerals? Calcium and magnesium play a big role in your sleep. If you have calcium imbalances, you may experience not only dry skin, brittle nails, and hair, but you will have an awful time getting to sleep. If you have a magnesium imbalance, you may experience waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to go back to sleep. This type of deficiency would also make you crave salt, which is needed to produce chloride and hydrochloric acid, which is needed to digest protein. As you can see, there is a lot of connecting pieces to your health that you may not have known about before. Just knowing this small amount of information can move you from panic to empowerment, I promise. Knowledge is not power. The application of knowledge is power. So using this new information can be the catalyst for your transformation in 30 days or less, just like this little book promises. You can do this. You know you can. Since I have so much confidence in your ability to master these concepts, let's use this section for some serious self-discovery. Get out your journal and jot down what's going on with your mood, energy, bowels, and sleep. Review the list given and check off any health concern that you may have or had over the past three months. See if you can connect the dots from your spirit, mind, and body chapters. Identify what you can do now to stop your pain and disease from taking over your life. So here's the physical checklist. Fatigue and lethargy, fatigue after eating, fatigue at specific times of the day, tiredness after a normal night of sleep, difficulty sleeping or restless or interrupted sleep, grinding of teeth at night, drowsiness after receiving eight hours of sleep on average, loss of sexual desire, impotence, numbness in body or limbs, chills and feeling cold, feeling hot, intestinal gas. Some symptoms you may be able to admit to right away. The conscious mind signals the body when something is out of balance. Some symptoms may not be realized until you read the list. You may have a remembrance of feeling something and all at once, you may actually feel it again a day or so after doing this exercise. When we ignore symptoms and push the reality of them out of our conscious awareness, the trigger, word, picture, or sound activates the body to signal again. Speak life to your body. Words have power, remember? Speak life to your body instead of saying, I hate my legs 
or my arms get on my nerves, say something nice about your body, something positive. Words have vibration and create life. Be mindful of the words that come from your lips. Your words do impact your health. Write something nice about your body in your journal. Say it over and over and over until you see a change. Then repeat it forever to remind your subconscious, which is the boss, I'll share mine for inspiration. My body is a magnificent creation of God. It has given me everything I need to be healed. I can learn what they are to be whole. Dr. Stephanie Reed. It's nice to read other people's quotes, but this is about your transformation, not mine. Create your own quote. Write in your journal. Stick it on your dashboard. Write yourself a love letter. After all, you did get acquainted with the most beautiful part of you. It's time to grow that relationship to maximize every effort to get well. Your spirit has been awakened to your consciousness, giving you a newfound power to ensure your transformation. All you have to do is listen. Listen with your heart, your feelings. Watch your thoughts and reinvent a new belief system. These will create a new opportunity for you to relax, to rebuild and restore. You can heal and recover. You now have given yourself permission to throw out the old garment of panic that was weighing you down to redress yourself in a new garment of confidence stitched together by empowerment brought about by connecting spirit, mind, and body. And now, a brief break. <laughs> 